Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we are covering an exciting new topic. We will cover how to run large language models or LLMs locally. With the introduction of ChatGPT, LLMs have been a hot topic in the recent few months. There is an AI battle going on between the top tech companies. Microsoft-backed OpenAI has ChatGPT, Google has introduced BARD, and Meta has Llama. Anyways, Nomic AI has made various LLMs as open source that we can download and run locally. You can check their website for more details. Let's go ahead and uh, launch Jupyter Notebook and start implementing LLM for Chat Style Assistant locally. We will need GPT for all library installed on our machine. Using this library, we can download the model. First time we run this command, it will go ahead and download the model locally. I chose the GPT for all 113 Snoozy model, but you can explore other options from their website. Once the download is complete, we can check the users folder on Windows and we can see that we have a GPT for all folder and inside it, the model is stored. It is a seven gig file, so make sure you have enough space available on your hard disk. Back in our notebook, we define a prompt template. It has a JSON-like structure with key value pairs. We define a role and set this to user and content is set to our question that we want to ask the model. Next, we call the chat underscore completion function from the model and pass it our prompt. The output of the model is saved in a response variable. Let's go ahead and execute the cell to test the model. We see the various instruction printed out along with our prompt. Instruction reads, the prompt below is the question to answer our tasks to complete. Then it lists our question, what is the SQL select command, and provide an example of how to use it. Okay, we have a response from the model. The SQL select command is used to retrieve data from a database table. It allows you to specify which columns and rows of data should be returned. And here is an example of a select statement. This command will retrieve all the columns and rows from the customer table. This looks quite promising. The model's response contains instruction and prompt that we provide. Ideally, we only want to print the response. So from the response variable, we print the choices and this contains a message and inside the message, we have the role and the content. We are interested in the content. So we can grab the first index and then the message and then content. This prints out the actual response from the model. Great. We can run the model in a notebook or expose it in a web app where non-technical user can interact with it. The simplest solution I can think of is Streamlit. So we will build a small application using Streamlit. In this directory, we are going to create a virtual environment. So we will issue Python dash M V E N V and call the environment E N V environment is created. Let's go ahead and activate it. In this environment, we are going to install Streamlit. This library can take a while to complete. So we'll give it time to finish. Next, we will install GPT for all. In this folder, we are going to create a Python file. Let's call it app.py. We will open this folder in VS Code and open the file and start coding the solution. As usual, we'll import the libraries at the top, Streamlit and GPT for all. Next, we'll import the model. So we'll borrow the code from the notebook and save this in a variable. Let's create a title with Streamlit and provide it any text you like. Following this, we provide a text box where users can enter their questions. We save the enter text in a variable. Let's copy our prompt from the notebook. In the prompt, we can replace the content with a value we capture from the input. Next, we check if there's a value in the prompt variable. And we are going to wrap the response in a try accept block. We make the call to the model's chat completion function and whatever response we get from the model, we can print that on the web page with the st.write function. In the write function, we display the response from the model. So we can copy it from our notebook where we isolate the actual reply from the model. 
Let's go ahead and uh, close the accept block. In the accept block, we display the errors, if any. Let's go ahead and save this file and fire up Streamlit. We can issue Streamlit run and provided our file app.py. Okay, it is unable to instantiate the model. Let's go ahead and check the code to make sure we haven't made a mistake. I think our code is good. It turns out that there are other libraries that are needed to instantiate the model. I copied the requirement file from the GPT for all repo. The file will be available in GitHub along with the app and the notebook. Let's go ahead and install the requirements. We can issue a pip install command with dash r and the requirement dot text. The file has a long list of libraries, so I'll go ahead and let it complete. Okay, the requirements are installed. Let's rerun our app. This time around, it's a success, so congrats. Our GPT for all model is running locally. Let's ask GPT a question. I will paste in the SQL select question and see if we get an answer. We should only see the response from the model printed on the screen. I noticed that the model takes a little longer to run than the notebook. Here is our model's reply. The SQL select command is used to retrieve data from the database. It allows you to specify columns and whatnot. And we have an example of a select statement. Let's go ahead and uh, ask it something fun. I have picked up this question from a blog and OpenAI does provide some fun answers to this. So let's see if this model can do something similar. This is a bust. We didn't get a reply. So let's move on to the next question. Let's try and get a sample email script to ask folks to act more quickly. After a few seconds, the model produces an email script for us. This looks good. However, it does seem the reply is cut off. Anything after the word cooperation is truncated. Nevertheless, it produces an email script that urges folks to show more urgency on the current work. I'll go ahead and ask it one more question. Describe quantum computing for us. I should have gone the Michael Scott way and asked, describe quantum computing like I'm a five-year-old. I will go ahead and try that next to see if you get a simplified response. So here's the response on quantum computing. It is a field of study that focuses on development of computers that uses quantum mechanical phenomena, such as superposition and entanglement to perform operations on data. These computers are designed to take advantage of unique properties of quantum systems, such as ability to store and process information in a different way than classical computers. I'll go ahead and change the prompt a bit. Describe quantum computing like I'm a five years old. I'll copy the existing reply so we can compare if you get a different reply. Let's see if the model simplifies the answer for a five-year-old. We indeed receive a different reply. This is simplified and anyone can understand it. This is amazing. I like the fact that it factored in the age. This is how we can implement LLMs locally. You can try it on your end and share your experience in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.